Hello everyone. On this video we will be covering the curl and divergence of a vector field. Alright, so before we jump into that, I just want you to remember a little bit of notation. Okay, so if we have the gradient of a function, remember that's the partial of f with respect to x times the i unit vector plus the partial of f with respect to y times the j unit vector plus the partial of f with respect to z times the k unit vector. Okay, where that symbol it looks like an upside down triangle is the differential operator del. Alright, so just that quick reminder and now we can jump right into the definition of curl of a vector field. So we have the definition of curl of a vector field. Okay, so that means that the curl, and I'm putting the little arrow over curl because in most textbooks and programs it's in bold print along, you know, the same way a vector would be. So I'm just putting the arrow over it to show that it would show up in bold print. Okay, so the curl of your vector field that is equal to, remember your vector field is m times the i unit vector plus n times the j unit vector plus p times the k unit vector where m, n, and p are functions. Okay, so that is, so the curl of our vector field is equal to our gradient vector, I mean our del vector, and the cross product of our vector field. Okay, so that will actually come out to I'm going to move that over a little bit. Will equal the partial derivative of p with respect to y minus the partial of n with respect to z, and that's times the i unit vector, minus the partial of p with respect to x minus the partial of m with respect to z times the j unit vector plus the partial of n with respect to x minus the partial of m with respect to y times your k unit vector. Alright, so this is the definition of the curl of a vector field. Now a quick note If the curl of that vector field is equal to zero, that means it's called irrotational. Not irrational, irrotational. Alright. So just looking at this, that's a lot to try and ask you to remember. And honestly, for the most part, you don't have to remember this. Okay, so I'm going to show you a shortcut method to actually solving for the curl. Okay, so to remember the definition. Okay. You know that your gradient vector, not gradient vector, while well, I keep saying that, your del vector is equal to partial with respect to x, 
your partial with respect to y and your partial with respect to z. And we also know that our vector field is equal to m times the i unit vector plus n times the j unit vector plus p times the k unit vector. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to get both of those and kind of find their cross product. Okay, so the cross product for those two, if you remember to find the cross product, you can actually, because remember the curl is just the cross product of the two. So to find the cross product, the first thing you do, remember your first row is your I, your J, and your K. Okay, your second row is your del vector. So you have partial with respect to X, your partial with respect to Y, and your partial with respect to Z. All right. Now, your third row is just your vector field function, which is your m, your n, and your p. Okay, so really all you have to remember is your plus, minus, plus, because the first term is positive, the second term is negative, and the third term is positive. So remember that plus, minus, plus, you're set. Okay, and from here on out, you just use this, let me move this equal sign over because it gets a little lengthy as you can remember up there to calculate to find that formula. So remember you cover up your I column first and you have your partial with respect to Y of P minus your partial with respect to Z as of N. Okay, So we have our partial P respect to Y minus partial of N with respect to Z times the I unit vector. Okay, remember how that goes. We go from there to there. Minus, now you curve up your J column. Okay, partial with respect to X of P. Minus partial with respect to Z of M. So partial P with respect to X minus partial of M with respect to Z. Partial P with respect to X minus partial M with respect to Z times your J unit vector. Okay. F plus, remember, cover up your K column. Partial, partial of N with respect to X minus partial of M with respect to Y. Partial of N with respect to X minus partial of M respect to y times your k unit vector. All right. So as you can see here, just using our three by three matrix, we're able to find the curl of our vector field without having to remember all of that. All right. Now we see how that works in 3D space. Now for a 2D definition or a 2D plane, let's say for f of x, y equals mi plus nj, the curl of this two-dimensional vector field would equal, you still have your i, your J and your K. Okay. You also have your partial with respect to X, your partial with respect to Y, and your partial with respect to Z. And you have your M, your N, and instead of a P, because remember P is the function next to your K unit vector, there is no P. So we're just going to put zero, and I'll put zero here. So no one confuses that for an O. All right. 
right? And you solve it the exact same way. Okay, so if you are still writing, feel free to press pause. But we're going to go ahead and move on to our next page. All right, so let's say, for example, what if we wanted to find the curl of the vector field? Oh, a little early. For the vector field. Given by f of x. Y, Z equals, say, X times Y times Z times your I unit vector plus Y times your J unit vector plus Z times your K unit vector. And actually, what I want you to do is I want you to mark this as example one because we're actually going to come back to this later. Okay, so make this example one. Okay, so we want to find the curl of this vector field at the point 1, 2, 1. All right. Okay, so just my little personal thing, I'm going to rewrite our vector field, give x, y, z times the i unit vector plus y times the j unit vector plus z times your k unit vector. And that's because this is your m, your n, and your p. Okay, so that means, remember the curl of our vector field the del vector and cross product of our vector field, which is equal to, remember your first row is your i, j, and k. You have your i, your j, and your k. Remember your second row is just your del vector, so that's the partial with respect to x, partial with respect to y, and your partial with respect to z. And remember, your third row is your M, N, and P. So this is your M, your X, Y, Z. Your N is Y. And your P is Z. And just remember the plus, minus, plus for the terms. And from here, you're all set to go. Okay, so I'm just going to move this equal sign over a little bit because it's going to, of course, stretch out. So let's say this is equal to, okay, so remember you cover up your I column. Okay, so you have the partial with respect to Y of Z minus the partial with respect to Z of Y. Okay, so you have the partial with respect to Y of Z minus the partial with respect to Z of Y. Uh -oh times the I unit vector, minus, cover up your J column, okay, so you have the partial with respect to X of Z, minus the partial with respect to Z of X, Y, Z, okay, so you have the partial with respect to X of Z, minus the partial with respect to Z of X, Y, Z. Yeah, times your J unit vector plus cover up your K column. You have your partial with respect to X of Y minus your partial with respect to Y of your XYZ. Partial with respect to X of Y minus partial with respect to Y of X, Y, Z. Of course, that's times your K unit vector. I'll put that underneath it. K 
Okay, so if we find the partial derivative of z with respect to y, of course, it's with respect to y, so that z is viewed as a constant. So that's 0 minus 0, because the same thing here with respect to z, y is viewed as a constant. Okay, so that's minus partial with respect to x of z, z is viewed as a constant. So, of course, we're going to make that 0 minus partial with respect to z of x, y, z just becomes x, y, since the x, y is viewed as a constant. That's times j unit vector plus partial with respect to y of y. Oh, partial with respect to x. I don't know why I put that as y. I just wrote that a little too fast. There we go. Partial with respect to x of y is 0. Minus partial with respect to y of x, y, z. Remember, that's just going to be x, z. Times your k unit vector. So that means the curl of your vector field is equal to 0i, that minus and minus become plus, so you have plus xy times the j unit vector minus xz times the k unit vector. Or you can just make it xy j minus xz. Okay. Either way works. Alright, so now that we have the curl of our vector field, we now plug in our 1, our 2, and our 1, which of course is our x, our y, and our z. Uh oh, sorry about that. Alright, so that means the curl of our vector field at the point 1, 2, 1 is equal to, remember, this is our curl formula here. We can use, of course, this one or this one, doesn't matter. Since there are no x's or y's here, that just stays as 0, i plus x, y times the j unit vector. So that's 1 times 2. No, that is plus, yes. 1 times 2 times the j unit vector minus the xz, which is 1 times 1. So you have 1 times 1 times the k unit vector. Okay, so that's going to equal 0i plus 2j minus the k unit vector. Or you can just write it as 2j minus k. All right. And if you wanted to, you can also write it as 0 to negative 1, if you wanted to put it in vector form. All right. So if you are still writing, feel free to press pause. But we're going to go ahead and move on to our next page. Okay, so starting off once again, we're going to take a little travel back in time. So if you remember the test for conservative vector field. 
test for conservative vector field in space. Okay, so of course that's our 3D space. Okay, so if you remember by the definition, our vector field is conservative if and only if the partial derivative of P with respect to Y is equal to the partial of N with respect to Z. Partial of P with respect to X is equal to the partial of M with respect to Z. And the partial of N with respect to X is equal to the partial of M with respect to Y. Okay, so that's what we covered before when we talked about the conservative and potential functions and all that good stuff. But this should look a little familiar, not just because we covered it before, but if you notice, our formula for the curl of a vector field. So the curl of our vector field is equal to partial of P with respect to Y minus the partial of N with respect to Z minus the partial of P with respect to X minus the partial of M with respect to Z plus partial of N with respect to X minus the partial of M with respect to Y times your K unit vector. Okay. Now a strange thing well, well a strange thing will happen if the test for conservative vector field is true. So if the test for conservative vector field is true, what does that show us? If the partial of P with respect to Y is equal to the partial of N with respect to Z, then here that turns to zero. Okay, Same thing here. The partial of P with respect to X is equal to the partial of N with respect to Z. That becomes zero. Same thing here. The partial of N with respect to X is equal to the partial of m with respect to y, that's going to become zero. Okay, so that means the curl of our vector field is equal to zero minus zero times the i unit vector, minus zero minus zero times the j unit vector, plus zero minus zero times the k unit vector, or it just equals the zero vector. So what does this tell us? If our vector field is conservative, no, not if, but our vector field is conservative, if the curl of it is equal to zero. Or in other words, if it's irrotational. All right. So if you are still writing, feel free to press pause. But we're going to go ahead and move on to our next example. So we're going to call this example two, even though we're not going to come back to it. We're only going to come back to the first one, well, this one and the third one. Okay, so let's say we want to find the curl of our vector field. Or the vector field given by f of x, y, z, 
is equal to 2xy times the i unit vector plus x squared plus z squared times the j unit vector plus 2zy times the k unit vector. All right. So to solve this one, of course, we know this is our M, this is our N, and this is our P. So the curl of our vector field is equal to our del value or our del vector and the cross product of our vector field. Okay, which is equal to, of course, just like before, your first row is your i, your j, and your k. Your second row is your partial with respect to x, your partial with respect to y, and your partial with respect to z. And your third row is your m, your n, and your p. So you have 2xy. You have x squared plus z squared. And you have 2zy. Alright, so just like before, move that all the way over. We're going to cover up our y column. Okay, so we have the partial with respect to y of 2zy minus the partial with respect to z of x squared plus z squared. Okay, so partial with respect to y of 2zy minus the partial with respect to z of x squared plus z squared times the i unit vector minus, because remember it's plus minus plus, cover up your j column, partial with respect to x of 2zy minus the partial with respect to z of 2xy. Okay, so you have the partial with respect to x, 2zy, minus the partial with respect to z of 2xy. Why do I always run out of room? Okay, so that's plus, covering up your k column, partial with respect to x of x squared plus z squared minus partial with respect to y of 2xy. Okay, and I'm going to put that just underneath it so I don't run out of room. Okay, so make that plus partial with respect to x, x squared plus z squared minus partial with respect to y. 2xy that's times your k unit vector. All right, so now we go ahead and calculate those terms. Okay, so the partial of this term with respect to y, 2z. Partial of this term with respect to z, this is a constant, so that would be 0, so it would be 2z. So you have 2z times the i unit vector minus partial of this term with respect to x. These are all considered constants with respect to x, so that's just 0. Partial with respect to z of 2xy, these are all considered constants, so that would be 0 times the j unit vector plus partial with respect to x of x squared plus z squared is just 2x minus partial with respect to y of 2xy is 2x times the k unit vector. You kind of separate that a little bit. 
Okay, so we end up with 2z minus 2z, so you have 0i minus 0j plus 0k, which of course is equal to 0, 0, 0, or just your 0 factor. Okay, so since the curl of our vector field is equal to zero vector. Our vector field is irrotational. All right. Okay. So if you are still writing, feel free to press pause. But we're going to go ahead and move on to the divergent of a vector field. Okay, so definition of divergent. of a vector field. Alright, so the divergence of our vector field f of x, y is equal to m times the i unit vector plus n times the j unit vector is, is denoted just by div. Okay, so the divergence f of x, y is equal to, you still have your gradient vector, but this time it's the dot product of your vector field. Okay, and that's really easy to remember because it's just the partial of m with respect to x plus the partial of n with respect to y. That's it. It's a whole lot easier to remember this than it is to remember the curl of the vector field. Okay. And let's say for our three-dimensional vector field, which is mi plus nj plus p times the k unit vector. The divergence of this particular vector field, again, is equal to the gradient vector, not gradient vector, the del vector and the dot product of the vector field. And that's just the partial of m with respect to x plus the partial partial of n with respect to y plus the partial of p with respect to z. Of course that's in a 3D space. All right. So of course, just like with convergence, divergence has a special saying if it equals zero. If the divergence of a vector field is equal to zero, then that vector field is said to be divergence free. All right. So just like we did with the curl, we're going to kind of break down the divergence. Let's say the divergence of f of x y, z is the dot product of our del vector and our vector field. Okay. 
So really, that just means our del vector, which is the partial with respect to x times the i-unit vector, plus the partial with respect to y times the j-unit vector, plus the partial with respect to z times the k-unit vector, and the dot product of our vector field is m times the i unit vector plus n times the j unit vector plus p times your k unit vector. Okay. So of course the dot product just means that we multiply the i terms. So in this case the partial with respect to x of m is just partial of m with respect to x plus you have partial of y and n, so that's the partial of n with respect to y, plus partial of z and p, partial of z, partial of p with respect to z, kind of mix that up there. Partial of p with respect to z. Okay. So that's how you'd come across your formula there. All right, so if you are still writing, feel free to press pause, but we're going to go ahead and move on to our next example. And this one we're going to call example three. And remember, we're gonna come back to one and this example a little later. So that's why we're marking them one, two, and three. Okay, so let's say we want to find the divergence of the vector field say f of x y z equals let's say x times y times z times the i unit vector plus y times the j unit vector plus z times the k-unit vector at the point 1, 2, 1. Okay, so this should look familiar. This is the exact same problem we had in example 1. Where, of course, this is your m, your n, and your p. Okay, so let's find the divergence. So we know the divergence of our vector field, just writing down the formula, is the dot product of your del vector and your vector field itself. Okay. So really, you don't even have to remember this, but it's good information to know for any concept questions. But really, all this equals is the partial of m with respect to x plus the partial of n with respect to y, plus the partial of p with respect to z. Okay, so I'm just going to move that equal over a little bit. So the partial with respect to x of m is just the partial with respect to x of your m, which is x, y, z. Plus the partial with respect to y of your n is just y. Plus the partial with respect to z of your p is just z. Okay, so you have your m, your n, and your p. Okay, so that's just going to equal the partial with respect to x, makes that just y z. Partial with respect to y of y is just 1. Partial with respect to z of z is just 1. So that means the divergence of our vector field is equal to yz plus 2. Okay, so we have our divergence. All right, now at the point 1, 2, 1, just like before, 
that's your X, your Y, and your Z. The divergence at the point 1, 2, 1 is equal to, remember that's your divergence there. So X is equal to 1. Well, you don't really have a X in there, so you don't have to worry about it. Your Y is 2 and your Z is 1. So that's equal to 2 times 1 plus 2, which is 4. All right. Now, if you notice, the curl of a vector field will give you a vector. But the divergence of a vector field will give you a scalar, scalar value. Okay. There's a little something to kind of look at. Make a little note of it. The curl. will equal a vector and the divergence of that same vector field will give you a scalar value. All right. So if you are still writing, feel free to press pause, but we're going to go ahead and move on to our next page. There we go. <coughs> Excuse me. And this page will look at the relationship between divergence and curl. All right, so let's say if your vector field equals m times the i unit vector plus n times the j unit vector plus p times the k unit vector is a vector field and m, n, and p have continuous second partial derivatives. Okay, then the divergence of the curl of our vector field will equal zero. Okay, so go ahead and prove that. Okay, so we have the divergence of the curl of our vector field. Okay, so breaking that down, really that just is equal to the dot product of our del vector and our core curl formula. Say that five times fast. Our curl formula, which is the cross product of our del vector and our vector field. All right, so instead of making the big old long three by three matrix, we're just going to go ahead and use the formula here. Okay, so that means if you have the dot product of your del vector, Okay, which is the partial with respect to x times your i unit vector plus your partial with respect to y times your j unit vector plus your partial with respect to z times your k unit vector. Okay, so we have our del vector. We just put it in a linear combination form. That the dot product of your curl. I'm going to see if I can squeeze all of that in here. 
Okay, so the partial of P with respect to Y minus the partial of N with respect to Z times your I unit vector minus partial of P with respect to X minus partial of M with respect to Z times your J unit vector. Oh, cutting it close. Plus partial of N with respect to X minus partial of M with respect to Y times your J unit vector and got it. Got it all on there. One line. All right, so you have the dot product, of course. You're going to get the first or the I terms and multiply them together or combine them. So you have the partial with respect to X, partial of P with respect to Y minus partial of N with respect to Z minus, you have these next two terms there. That gives you the partial of, with respect to y, partial of p with respect to x minus partial of m with respect to z. Plus, and now we do our third terms there, partial with respect to z, partial of n with respect to x minus partial of m with respect to y. So what does that give us? We go ahead and kind of apply our derivative to both of those. Second derivative with respect to P, that's with respect to X with respect to Y. Minus second derivative with respect to N minus with respect to X with respect to Z. Okay. Minus partial second derivative respect to P, respect to Y, with respect to X, plus partial second derivative of M, respect to Y, with respect to Z, plus partial second uh -oh, with respect to N, with respect to Z, with respect to X, minus partial second of M, respect to Z, respect to Y. Okay, so we went ahead and applied the derivatives to each one of those terms. Okay. But if you notice, we know that it's continuous. So the fact that it's continuous means that the partial with respect to X and Y is equal to the partial with respect to Y and X. So you have these two You have these two, and you have these two. Okay, so these two are actually equal. So you have positive and negative, so they cancel out. Here, same thing here. You have the negative and the positive, so they cancel out. Same thing here. You have the plus and the minus, that cancels out, so which leaves you with zero. So, if you are still writing this down, feel free to press pause, but we're going to go ahead and move on to our next example, which brings us back to examples one and three. Okay, this example, you could just call example because it's the last example, so no point in numbering them anymore. Okay, so from example one, and example three, let's say we want to find the divergence of the curl of our vector field. Of course, it's four, and I'll just go ahead and rewrite it. X, Y, Z is equal to X, Y, Z times the I unit vector plus Y times the J unit vector plus Z times your k unit vector. Okay, 
So we already know from example one, the curl, oh, forgot my arrow over the curl, is equal to xy times the j unit vector minus xz times the k unit vector. Or you can make it 0i plus xy j minus xz k. Okay, so we know that the divergence of the curl of the unit vector is equal to our del vector and the dot product of our curl which is the del vector and our vector field. Okay, so that means that's equal to our del vector. Instead of linear combination, I'm just going to write it as a vector. Say partial with respect to x, partial with respect to y, and our partial with respect to z, and the dot product of our curl, which we already know is 0, x, y, and negative x, z. 0, x, y, negative x, z. So we get our first terms. Partial with respect to x of 0. Move that up a little bit. We have the partial with respect to x of 0. Plus, we have the partial with respect to y of x, y. Plus, our partial with respect to z of negative xz. Okay, so what does this give us? Partial with respect to x of 0 is just 0 plus our partial with respect to y of xy is just x plus our partial with respect to z of negative xz is negative x so 0 plus x or well, you might as well say minus x, is just equal to 0. But we knew that already just because of the previous example, I mean the previous definition. All right, so that's why the divergence of a curl of a function is going to equal 0. So it's kind of like multiplication and division or adding and subtracting. They cancel each other out. All right, so... Hopefully this video made sense and I will see you on the next video.